Hi, welcome. I'm Jeanette Yaff, and today I have a special guest with me. She is going to share something very special with us that has not been penned by an adoptee yet. Janice has created something that is called the Daughter's Bill of Rights. It is a list that few people discuss and many people take for granted. And if you live within a normal blood-related family, you will rarely encounter these barriers. But if you are adopted, your rights continuing into adulthood remain compromised. So welcome, Janice. Thank you, Jeanette. Here they are, the Daughter's Bill of Rights. A right to the truth about what happened and why this child was given up for adoption. The right to be part of an everlasting family. The right to receive unconditional love by all family members. A right to know that I'm adopted. A right to counseling throughout my life with a counselor who understands adoption from my point of view, from the adoptees. A right to my own real birth certificate. A right to reject a falsified birth certificate. A right to know my own real name a right to change my name and use my own real name or name that I choose, a right to use that name as my identity, fragile as it may be, and for others to refer to me as the name I choose, a right to know my birth families when it is right for me, a right to know which family you're a permanent part of, a right to a forever home, a right to know your family histories and to be a part of that history. A right to know your ancestry, your ancestral locations, to know where you're from. A right to choose which family and history feels most right to me, should I feel I have to or need to choose. A right to be treated equally with other children in each family or extended family. A right to be treated equally by all adults of those families to be held in esteem, openly and outrightly, not quietly and in secret, in shame. A right to be invited to Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners where family is celebrated. A right to receive invitations to weddings of family members, a right to attend weddings of family members, a right to be in family pictures at those weddings, a right to receive birth announcements, graduation announcements, a right to attend graduations, a right to receive notice of deaths in family, a right to receive invitations to funerals and attend family celebrations and attend funerals, a right to be seated with the family at those events, a right to inheritances in every one of my families, adopted and birth families, a right to be accepted as a family member to those family members in hospitals and nursing homes, a right to interact as a normal family member would from time to time to ask for emotional support and maybe even financial support. A right to be informed when a family member is in the hospital. A right to visit them as a family member in the hospital. A right to be with a family member when they pass away. A right to be treated like a family member at my death. A right to be buried with my family. A right to have society know the burden that is cast carelessly on adopted children. A right to affect legislation to remove this burden from the child. A right to have my birth family redeem the past, to break the cycle and include the adoptee and their other children equally. A right to be included by all. A right to be loved. A right to be. You are so strong and your vulnerability will give any adoptee listening the strength to recite these Bill of Rights for themselves. It's very, it's confusing for us, the adoptee, and it's confusing to the next generation. And it's, it just leaves holes of sadness. The 
the responsibility for bringing children into the world is created by two people, not just the birth mother. An inherent support system from the two people who created the child to support one another. The greatest of all things is love. And we all possess the human capability of loving one another. Why did I love and connection? the fear of what's going to happen if you go through the portal and you meet your biological child, you're actually going to feel better. You're going to feel relieved. Right. What happens is when we don't have reunion, the fear incubates and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But we'd like you to be our friend, a relative. Confidant. Confidant. Advisor. Advice, elder counsel, you know, wise one to ask the important questions as we all do as we get older. There are constantly life issues that you would just love to discuss with someone who has walked that path before. And wouldn't it be beautiful at the end of the day, whenever that end of day comes, we are holding hands. break and shatter these misassumptions that to have a reunion and reunify with your child, if there's a birth parent listening, you're going to be okay. And it will actually benefit both of you. There is alignment already in your DNA. Just follow that alignment, follow that path. Is there anything you'd like to share about writing this? encourage you all to use this as your springboard, as your inspiration to not make it your life experience. And I'm so proud that you've done this and you're creating a voice and a space for other adoptees to do the same. My pleasure. Check out my new book, What is Adoption for Kids?